Justice Alito is the latest uh, Supreme Court justice trying to live like a billionaire and apparently uh, violating disclosure rules in the process. Another Supreme Court justice caught in a billionaire's pocket. Is Congress finally going to do something about the high court's appearance of impropriety? Survey says it seems. Welcome to TYT Overruled. I am your host, Adrian Lawrence. Yeah, I mean, you've got all the basic food groups here. You've got the right-wing activist billionaires who care about outcomes at the court. You've got a Federalist Society justice. You've got wildly extravagant gifts. You've got untoward and probably illegal secrecy. Last week, ProPublica sent Samuel Alito questions about his travels. Instead of responding to the media outlet directly, while the Supreme Court justice ran to the Wall Street Journal to publish an op-ed basically calling ProPublica liars, even though ProPublica hadn't published any story yet. Guilty much? Well, it seems so. The investigative journalism outlet would go on to publish a hell of a story about how Alito flew for free on the private jet of billionaire Paul Singer to a luxury $1,000 a night resort in Alaska for a fishing trip that would have cost around a quarter of a million dollars. Now, Alito later voted for a ruling that netted Singer's vulture fund a whole lot of money. How much? That one ruling by the Supreme Court in Paul Singer's favor was worth $2.4 billion to his company. We're not talking about minor rulings on issues that are irrelevant. This is substantial. Not millions, but billions. This sure seems like corruption of the highest order. But Alito says that's not the case at all. We've got it all wrong. In his op-ed, he wrote about the chartered flight, the cost of which could have exceeded $100,000 one way. As for the flight, Mr. Singer and others had already made arrangements to fly to Alaska when I was invited shortly before the event. And I was asked whether I would like to fly there in a seat that, as far as I am aware, would have otherwise been vacant. It was my understanding that this would not impose any extra cost on Mr. Singer. Had I taken commercial flights, that would have imposed a substantial cost and inconvenience on the deputy U.S. Marshals who would have been required for security reasons to assist me. And that's interesting because in his confirmation hearing, Alito promised to recuse himself in cases where questions of impropriety could arise. And yet he stayed on the cases involving Singer's companies. That's odd. The policy that I followed during all my years on the bench, which is to bend over backwards uh, to make sure that I didn't do anything that came close to violating the code of conduct or give anybody the impression that I was doing anything that was improper. Well, speaking of impropriety, you'd never guess who arranged that 2008 fishing trip for Alito. It may be a name familiar with Justice Clarence Thomas's less than reputable extracurriculars and other right wing activist activities. And for the cherry on top, you've got Leonard Leo, the billionaire's court fixer, uh, arranging the deal. You just can't make this up. The article noted the role of conservative judicial activist Leonard Leo in organizing the Alaska trip, including recruiting Singer to fly Alito to the lodge. The longtime head of the Federalist Society, Leo helped Alito win confirmation to the Supreme Court. Singer and the lodge's owner were major donors to the Federalist Society. Alito, who wrote the landmark Dobbs decision that struck down federal abortion rights last year, didn't list the trip on his financial disclosure forms, an omission that some ethics experts say could violate federal law. Now, like Thomas, Alito claimed the disclosure rules were murky and he didn't know it was reportable. Interestingly enough, it seems that the left-wing women on the court seem to have no issue whatsoever making disclosures or airing on the side of propriety. So what's being done about the Supreme Court's reported flagrant appearance of impropriety? Well, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse had this to say. But we are working forward both through the Finance Committee and through the Judiciary Committee on an investigative plan and implementation of that plan to get to the bottom of this. The first thing you want to do is find out what the facts are. We did not know about this Alito travel until ProPublica broke it. I'm sure there was a lot more in the way of travel and gifts from billionaires to Federalist Society justices. We need to dig into this and dig into it hard, and we need to subpoena records where we need to find them. 
The last time the committee invited Chief Justice John Roberts, he blew them off entirely. Even so, the Democratic senators here appear to be gung-ho because there's clearly a problem. Here's the bottom line as far as I see it. The disclosures about uh, Justice Alito uh, strangely or uh, sadly parallel the same disclosures about uh, Justice Thomas. It appears that there is a feeling in the Supreme Court that it's none of our business. The public doesn't need to know mm -hmm. when these conflicts of interest occur. And the justices don't need to recuse themselves from critical decisions that are worth billions of dollars uh, from the people who are befriending, befriending them on their vacations. That's got to come to an end. And there's one person who could end it before the sun sets today, and that's Chief Justice John Roberts. It's time for him to step up and announce there will be a code of ethics for the Supreme Court and the disclosure laws will apply and they'll follow at least the same rules as every other federal judge in America. Not doing so is really at the expense of the reputation of the court. So with this latest revelation of a member of the Supreme Court benefiting big time from those with interest before the court, do you think that something is actually going to be done to hold them accountable this time? You let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hit that like and follow button and thanks for watching.